Hey guys, so I was driving my Saab 95 to the shops and everything was absolutely fine. I did my shopping, got back in the car and it wouldn't start and instead it made this noise. Try to turn the engine on. You can hear the steering wheel lock motor trying to engage, disengage, whatever. I mean, the, the wheel is not actually locked. Now this noise means that there's something very specifically wrong with the steering wheel lock module, this thing here. Now there's a temporary fix and a permanent fix. The permanent fix is to replace this unit with a brand new one from the GM website. And that is actually what I'm going to be doing. I have one on order. There's a link in the video description to get one. But the point of this video is how you can fix this temporarily to be able to actually get your car home. Because that's what I had to do. I didn't want to have to pay for a recovery truck to come and pick my car up. So I wanted to just fix it myself and then drive it home. And that's exactly what I did. Now I originally thought that this was going to be a permanent fix for this unit. And fortunately, every time I super glue it using different variations of super glue, it fails after three or four times. So it's the glue is just not strong enough to hold the metal together when the motor is spinning the, the, the relative part. OK, so now what I'm going to do is show you what tools you need to actually remove this from the car, how to remove it from the car. And then we're going to look at how to disassemble it and find the piece that you need to super glue so that we can put it back in the car and get the car started. So let's do that now. So to remove this steering wheel lock module, you are going to need something to kneel on because you're going to be on your knees. So let's jump, jump down here. And then you're going to need two tools. You're going to need a seven millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket here. So the seven millimeter socket is to take the dashboard apart and the 10 millimeter socket is to actually remove the steering lock module. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to open this compartment here and squeeze the two sides of it together and then just lift it out. Then we need to remove this part here, okay, and that's four bolts. Uh, one of them is just under here, so we're just going to go ahead and remove them now. And then this part will just lift off. You might need to pull this side part out a little bit and then this part will just fall down like that and that's exactly what you want because once this is down you can then just remove this kick panel underneath here and just move it out to one side because what we're going to find is this metal box here is the actual steering wheel lock module and behind it there are two bolts two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it in place. So that is what we are going to be using the 10 millimeter part for to, to undo that. And once you've removed the bolts, this is just going to literally drop out. And uh, you'll see that it has this cable and it's got a uh, pinch connector on both sides and you're just gonna pinch that and that will actually remove it. And there we go. It is removed. So this is the uh, steering wheel lock mechanism here. And I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to do that. So basically that lock is coming in in and out with uh, no friction whatsoever. So I think this is indeed the issue. So as you can see, we have four screws here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is remove these. And then we can lift this first part off. Like so. Now at this point, if you have the same issue that I have, this part here will just come out because it is no longer connected to the bit that's screwed into the, the bottom of this unit. So just remove it and get rid of it. Now I've already super glued this, so I'm not gonna remove it, but uh, you will just remove it. The next point of call when you've got this far is to remove these two screws here. So that's what we're gonna do now. And then we can lift the PCB out of this uh, box like so as you can see this plastic part has actually just uh, fallen off of the PCB so we can just take that out and uh, just stick it back on so don't worry about that there we go so the next point of call is to remove the screws that are remaining and then we can lift this metal part just directly out and what you're going to find is that there's a couple of cogs in here so we can just remove this white one put it to one side 
and we want to remove this black cog as well and what you're going to find is the metal with the threads on it here is still going to be inside this black cog uh, because this part has snapped off of the rest of this part here and um, that is the problem that we currently have with this car so your point of call would be to remove this piece of metal from this black cog and then super glue it back onto this piece here like I have here so the super glued part is just here that's that's where I've super glued this together and um, now that this is one piece again it will allow the car to start again until of course this super glue gives up and then I'm back at square one again hence me having to order a new part now with regards to this when you've super glued this leg back on here again leave it for at least half an hour um, a minimum of half an hour I mean ultimately you should leave it overnight because you do want the super glue to hold strong enough so that the car doesn't just rip it straight off as soon as the motor starts spinning it so now we have to put it back together again so grab this piece here and slot in the newly glued piece so that it sits nicely in the hole like that so that is how it should look and then on the other side where you see the metal protruding through grab the black plastic wheel and then we screw it onto the newly super glued leg now the trick here is to ensure that you don't screw it too tightly just do it until it stops with absolutely no pressure whatsoever uh, you can start to see the uh, other end of the metal on the other side of the wheel and just leave it like that absolutely no pressure whatsoever then grab this white wheel and what you want to do is just slide it underneath the black wheel here so it goes into this curved area with the larger part underneath the black wheel and the teeth of the smaller part of the white wheel on the larger black wheel here that's that's how we want to have it now we need to place this part back into this main part here and the small little hole in the center of the white wheel here needs to go onto this spine here and because gravity is just going to knock this out as soon as you try to put it in the, the best way to do this is to do it sideways on with both parts sideways until it looks something like this and then you just move the metal bit piece in so that it's solidly in place and at this point we can start to put the screws back in again So at this point we grab our PCB and there's two parts of this that you need to ensure that you know about. The first is this black plastic part that likes to fall off and you just need to make sure it doesn't. And then the, these two prongs here because these need to fit into the top of the motor here, these two prongs here. So just be very careful as you try to replace it to ensure that those prongs go into the top of the motor in a very very nice and easy fashion and there we go so that it's literally as simple as that and now we're going to replace the two screws and at this point the only thing we need to do is replace the last part so we're just going to plonk this straight in place and then replace the last four screws So to put the unit back into place, it's literally the opposite of removing it. So what you need to do is first of all, plug in the cable into this part here, like so, and then push the unit back into its location underneath, which is gonna be very, very easy. There's the bracket and it just plugs into that, like so. And then we need to replace the two bolts to hold it in place. And then we place the kick plate back into place underneath here. It should actually go underneath the dashboard like so, which then allows us to place this part back in place again. It would be easier just to pull this part out to do this. And then we just screw this back in place. And then we just close this up. And all that's left is to put this little cubby hole door back in. So the two hinges 
just hook onto those two hinge points there, like so. And then we just push it in. And there we go. And now there's the moment of truth of actually trying it. Clutch it down, start the button. And there we go, all working. So as I've said before, I have ordered a replacement part for a brand new GM component, like for like. It's coming from the USA, so it's gonna take some time to get here. It will definitely be after Christmas. So I will do a video showing the replacement and using an MDI to actually program that part into the car as well. If you find yourself in a precarious situation where your steering wheel lock is not working for the exact reason that I showed you, I really hope this video helps you to get your car home. I'm sure it will. This method did work for me. Until next time.